An interesting statement um, attributed to Jordan Peterson, I haven't researched it that much, um, but so that um, collectivism is tyranny under the guise, guise of benevolence. Okay. Um, that's an interesting and very sweeping statement. Because he talks a lot about the value of Western civilization. What's Western civilization? It's a massive collective, right? It's just one way of viewing the world. It's, um, it's the civilization that has brought us things like post-modernity that he seems to be so opposed to, um, although he does see it as a conspiracy, as opposed to something like the way I see post-modernity. It just came about by a set of circumstances that you know, were a result of changes, not caused by changes, deliberately. I don't believe post-modernity has brought out deliberately to derail Western civilization, or for any other reason. I think it's just a fact. You want to see what causes post-modernity? What, what causes post-modernity is what I'm doing right now. I'm using the internet. That's what causes post-modernity. That's what's really abolished everything. It's abolished all, uh, abolished all the barriers um, between people on Earth. We can now, anyone on Earth can now be in instant, real-time communication with anybody else. Um, technology has gone so cheap and so plentiful uh, that uh, now basically anybody who feels like it has access to everybody else on Earth to talk to them about their ideas. What that also does is, because it's unregulated and it's anarchic, it means that you can question absolutely everything. Question everything, doubt everything, don't let any stone, don't leave any stone unturned, don't treat anything as sacred, um, and you've got basically post-modernity. You've got a civilization that has no real fundamental nature. It's not as though somebody is deliberately, or I, I shouldn't say this isn't happening. Like I'm, I won't say that there aren't people who are deliberately trying to make civilization kind of meaningless or woolly or whatever, um, but unless, of course, we're assuming that there are, you know, a whole bunch of Batman character type jokers out there who just want to watch the world burn, I presume that people actually want to do these things for certain reasons. Like, identity politics is one case where society is allegedly fracturing along the lines of identity. Yeah, well, it's just, you know, one group of people has seceded or concentrated on their own, um, their own narrow interests to the detriment of the larger society. All right, um, I can agree with that. Um, but it's not just a whole bunch of small groups doing it. The majority can do it as well. The majority can secede from society and say, to hell with you, I'm just looking to, looking to my own interests. I honestly believe, and I'm, I don't mean even this as a nasty criticism, but I honestly believe that the United States has just done this. I think that what got Trump elected <clears throat> was um, two simple things. Uh, the Mexican border and the um, Muslim thing. Basically what they mean is, Keep out. Keep non-white Americans out of America. Pinch off the supply of non-white Americans. Now, I don't want to get into whether or not that's a good thing, because I would, you know, I'm, an, I'm, I'm sort of amenable to the argument that, okay, a country like Romania is fundamentally something to do with having Romanians living in it and being a critical mass of them that decisively dominate that culture, that country called Romania. Same thing for Japan, same thing for um, the United States. What's an American? Okay, what is an American? Um, if you kneel for the national anthem, you're kind of saying, I'm not an American. You're kind of saying, this isn't my country, right? Um, okay, what is the, the country? Like, what is an American? I would ask, uh, you know, anyone, any one of these various people who have kneeled during the American national anthem, what is your country? If the United States isn't your country, what is? Okay. Um, you're saying that the United States is not something that black males can really identify with and be sort of included in, or they opt to opt out of it. In a sense, though, you're also saying that somebody who does subscribe to American culture is something. If you're saying, I'm not an American because I'm an African-American white or black person, then an American is somebody who is has attributes somehow, in some way, different from you. Therefore, you're kind of grouping all white people into the same uh, group. You're saying these are the people who worship Old Glory, not me. 
right? That's kind of the backhand of what this kneeling for the national anthem stuff is. So, strangely enough, by opting out as a secessionist sort of visible minority, or a secessionist minority generally, you are sort of creating another identity by default. You're saying, I'm not going to participate or identify with this particular civilization, this particular country, this particular set of values, because these belong to somebody other than me. Okay, who do they belong to? You're saying, if you ask me, by default, that they belong to white Americans. Okay, now, if you've sort of said, I am me, I'm not that group over there, then doesn't that group have something to say about that? Doesn't that group have, you know, have some sort of right to say, okay, you're shitting on my flag here? If it's not your flag, then it's somebody else's flag, and that means it's my flag, because I actually do say that I'm loyal to it, says, say, a white American. Although I know plenty of white Americans who aren't particularly loyal to the flag, but <laughs> that's another story. <clears throat> so... You're creating identities even by seceding, because you're saying that the majority has its own sort of nature. It has its own sort of set of values, which sort of don't apply to me or have been sort of taken away from me. I have been excluded from the majority. But you're still saying, I am not part of that. Okay, so then you're not part of what? You're not part of something that has attributes that is presumably ethnically based, because if you're seceding based on ethnicity, you're saying that the United States is an ethnic identity, right? Whether you like it or not, that is inescapable in this business of kneeling for the national anthem or the flag or whatever. Now, if that's the case, and you're sort of seceding from that group, that group can secede from you, right? Or you might may even be saying that it's already done that. It's kind of vomited you out of itself. It sort of said, I, you know, you, African-American male, are not part of us. Okay. And in a sense, you're agreeing with that analysis. You're saying, yes, you're right, white America. I am not part of you. So that opens all kinds of cans of worms, because now whitey, you know, me, I guess, can now say, um, okay, then this flag is mine, it does represent something. You said that it doesn't represent black people, so fine, I might as well come out and say it, it represents white people. A proper American is a white American. You said it, I might as well go along with you, because I'm not going to try and, you know, sort of pull you into my group anymore. If you're consciously stepping outside of it by, I guess, defiling my um, sacred cows, okay, like the national anthem and the flag. Fair enough. You do it, I do it. Um, even if it's even if I'm switching the place of the cart, cart and the horse, the the um, the point has been made. We are different. I am not part of the majority. If I am one of these people who is an African American male who's kneeling during the national anthem being played, you are now opening up, or in in a sense, legitimizing even after the fact what white America may have already done to you. You're actually sealing that. You're legitimizing it. You're saying that is correct. I am now not going to fight the fact that I've been excluded from American civilization anymore. I'm going to go along with it. Well, you have actually just, in a sense, said that America is a white country. Because if you've seceded from white America, then you don't really have anything to say anymore on what, a white, what America is, right? Really going around in circles here, but I just want to hammer that point home. There is something going on when you do something, when you secede from the larger society, when you sort of say, I want to opt out of this. Now, I've already spoken about what I think about people who do it as a group. Um, I think that that's a crazy idea. But Jordan Peterson, however, is saying we need to sort of think as a group and opt out as a group because he's saying that the dominant or the majority or the, uh, the sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, the... Um, the ideal or the, the sort of um, what we generally think of as a member of Western civilization. What we think of as Western civilization has certain attributes which are um, fundamental to what Western civilization is. In the United States, I guess I've kind of long-windedly described how it's even on both sides of the color divide, it's now kind of in many qu quarters in American society conceded that America is a white country. 
for better or for worse. Calling America a white country could actually be a brutal criticism of the United States, because he's basically saying that America is only really there for the benefit of white people. And therefore, you're just saying that America is fundamentally a white country. Well, then, in a sense, you've agreed with Jordan Peterson, because that's what he's saying. I won't, I won't get into racist things or anything like that, but he's saying that the critical mass, the what is seen as generally representative of Western civilization actually exists and is an identity. It is a thing that has attributes. It is a thing that we can describe. And he's kind of saying that we are outside of the whole of what is human civilization. I always say that Trump is playing white identity politics. And he's not playing it in the traditional way that, say, it was done in South Africa or in the Deep South under segregation or whatever, where you pass all these laws. He's just using the same sort of tactics, I would say, um, or some of the same tactics as the identity politicians that began their oeuvre in the 1960s did. You don't so much go against white interests, but you promote black interests. You don't go against Hispanic or gay or, or uh, I don't know, any other ethnic or identities interests. You only, you just promote your own. This is what I think Donald Trump uh, stands for. He stands for promoting the interests of white Americans, which a lot of Americans, and not all of them white, are saying is essentially what that civilization that is represented by the Stars and Stripes really is, for better or for worse. It's a white civilization. That's all that Donald Trump, I think, is really doing. Um, he's not David Duke. I would say he's more Archie Bunker. Um, Jordan Peterson has sort of taken that kind of point of view and applied it to Western civilization. Western civilization has attributes. Western civilization has boundaries. Western civilizations have things that do not apply to it. Western, has, Western civilization has a certain feel to it that is absent in other civilizations or is less apparent. Western civilization lacks things that other civilizations have in spades. You know, you can take a really obvious example, say like the the traditional Russian cult of the emperor, the leader, the czar, whatever. This is largely absent in Western civilization, unless you want to consider something like Bonapartism or something like that, Western civilization. But, you know, generally, it's it's a broadly based type government system, whereas Russia, they want a very strong center. Um, you know, this is just where how I'm sort of comparing and contrasting Western civilization with an, another civilization that's not generally considered to be Western civilization. There is a distinction made between the two at some point. So he is just taking that. He's taking Western civilization and he's turning it into an identity. It's a gigantic identity, but it is an identity that has interests. And those interests are to be pursued, are to be promoted. Western civilization is an identity, and I don't care how big it is, because if you're talking about Western civilization, you're excluding things that aren't Western civilization. Um, yeah, Jordan Peterson is an identity politician. He doesn't think that he is. Um, but in, again, it's sort of like the, the implications of what he's saying. The implications are that if he's defining America a certain way, or I shouldn't say America, but if he's defining Western civilization in a certain way, then then he's defining it in a way that excludes other civilizations. He's either seceding from world civilization, or he is simply saying this is what separates Western civilization from other civilizations, in the same way as somebody who's kneeling when the Star Spangled Banner is played, is in a sense seceding from the larger American society. They're saying this doesn't apply to me. He's, Jordan Peterson is simply doing that to Western civilization. And instead of actually saying that Western civilization has simply developed along lines that it promote the individual, he's saying that by promoting ind the individual, Western civilization took off. Therefore, we as a society, as a collective, as a civilization, must promote Western civilization. 
the weird sort of pivot that takes place. And again, a psychologist is precisely the sort of person that one would think would notice this. Like, psychologists sort of are good at tipping points when you're thinking. When you're thinking kind of, you know, a, a critical mass of your thinking sort of takes over and you lose your way. You, you, you forget about where you originally came from. You know, like the, the, the angry sort of um, activist who turns into a revolutionary who ends up becoming everything that he originally despised and didn't quite understand how that happened. Um, you know, the good man gone bad type thing. And he, he, even though he meant to do good in the world, he did all kinds of bad things. Um, it's like, how does that take place? Well, it's a, it's a purely psychological process because it's, you know, it's something that's taking place between you and your own mind, I guess, or you and your own ideas. You forget what your ideas are. If your ideas are individualistic, I would assume that they're not collective, especially when you're talking, you're sort of bad mouthing collectivities. How can you say that Western civilization is good and it's antithetical to collectives when Western civilization is by the very nature of excluding other things a collective? It doesn't make any sense. He's playing identity politics of a Western civilization variety uh, in the same way that Trump is playing identity politics in a white American variety. Um, saying that our group is good, that group is bad, and our group is under the obligation now to maintain its goodness and to maintain its edge over the bad people, which is, you know, a recipe for polarization, right? You're, you're, you're basically saying Western civilization is good, therefore the civilization that developed in China or on the Indian subcontinent is inferior. Okay. If you want to look at it that way, then all you're really doing is you've created a great big us versus them game. Tribalism collectivism. Don't think, do. You don't actually uh, exist as an individual. You, you exist as a corpuscle in this gigantic, massive thing called Western civilization. Never mind the fact that Western civilization is supposedly good because it doesn't turn human beings into corpuscles. Uh, well, you've just done that when you've said that you that we have an obligation to promote Western civilization against its challenges. You have. You've said, we're at war here. How do you actually promote individuality? Mystic of the Sands used the term policy. Perfect, brilliant term to describe this. Show me some policy, Mr. Peterson, that's going to actually bring your ideas into fruition here. Since you are actually saying that we have to run Western civilization in a certain way to achieve a certain result, that begs the question, you need a policy. You can't just say that's a good idea. You need to have an actual plan to put this into effect, how to mobilize society. Ah, mobilize society, a eh? agitprop, right? Is that, uh, you know, one could say that that, uh, that um, Jordan Peterson is, you know, a proponent of agitprop, which is something that you would always, you know, we've always traditionally uh, associated with the collectivist left wing. Um, again, he's simply lost his way, or he knows that he is he's being contradictory and doesn't care because he's succeeding at what he really wants to do. But again, the, these contradictions or these inconsistencies from the, from the lips of a psychologist are so glaring that you have to just assume that he knows that he's, well, he's full of shit, right? He's, he's just, he's contradicting himself um, in a situation where contradiction is not considered an allowable thing. Again, Western civilization is what it is, and it's not what it's not. Yeah, there's, you know, there's no sort of room there, is there? You know, I can, I, one could say that there's sort of a, a non-excluded middle between Western civilization and not Western civilization. But presumably, if Western civilization exists and it's distinct from other things, then a not Western civilization exists. Us and them, two collectives, never mind the individual. Um, Ayn Rand again, right? Stefan Molyneux again, right? Um, it's, we're all free, but God, the, the, menace to our freedom is so severe that we have to band together and fight for survival. Yeah, when you fight for survival, you're not fighting as a as an individual anymore. You're fighting as a unit. And you need to sort of close ranks and, in some sense, enforce discipline. Collectivism. Um, Western civilization is a result of something. It's just something that came about organically and developed along certain lines. It's not somehow better than other civilizations because it has certain attributes. Uh, it has certain attributes simply because it's natural for, you know, out of thousands of years of organic development, it ended up this way. 
It's not this way because it's better than others. Unless, of course, we're going to say that longevity of a civilization somehow makes it better. Okay, well, then we've got a long way to go because, uh, say, ancient Egypt or ancient China lasted one hell of a lot longer than the West ever did, and they certainly weren't individual, you know, individualistic societies. Long-winded, but, uh, again, it, Peterson fascinates me because he sort of... He says a lot that implies a lot backwards in, in, in a way that a psychologist can do. It's basically a lot of it, a lot of what he says is actually what he's not out and out saying. And I think he needs to be called out on things like that. 